Hey everybody, welcome back to Bear Ice. As usual, you know the drill. If you are loving the videos, enjoying the channel, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. So, we have reached the end of the Grand Prix series. Our sixth and final event, Ross Telecom Cup, took place this past weekend. The competition pretty much ended up being what I expected it to be, which is both a good thing and then also sometimes a bad thing. Sometimes I like it when stuff is a little different, you know, a little strange, a little unpredictable. This one was pretty predictable, but I mean, it was still a really good competition. So let's go take a look at what happened. Winning the gold medal here, decimating the competition, to no surprise, Kamila Valiva of Russia. I mean, for me, this wasn't a question of, is she going to win? It's how many points is she going to win by and how many records is she going to break? And the answer to both of those were just yes. Just yes. Yeah. She, she did all of that. She nailed everything. The triple axle in the short program was gorgeous. Triple X, triple toe, all level fours ridiculously huge PCS. We'll get to those in a second. It was a beautiful performance. I like the new dress. I mean, it's purple. It's pretty. I guess that's fine. You know, it's it's nothing remarkable. The program is nothing remarkable in all honesty, but because she's such a beautiful skater, she's one of those skaters who can elevate whatever they're skating to, especially now that she has improved so much in terms of her presentation, not only with the fact that she's so graceful and everything, but the fact that she's kind of feeling the music more. She's, she's performing more. And one thing about me, I adore a performer. That is one of the quickest ways to make me a fan. I don't care if you can't land a single jump. If you can go out there and perform and pull me into the music and pull me into your performance, I'm a fan. I see that she's connecting. She's putting more effort into that. And it really does elevate her skating even more for me. So again, short program was pretty much perfect and the judges just let the scores fly. I knew if she came in and did what she needed to do that that world record was going to be obliterated and I was right. 87.42 is the new world record score for the short program. Previously held by Aliona Kosternaya at 85.45, clearly Camila just blew right on past that. And I do not think that's the end of it. I would not be surprised to see that number go up close to 90 by the time we get to the Olympics. And I'm pretty sure she'll go over 90 at Russian Nationals because, I mean, Russian Nationals. So She finished the short program with like a seven plus point lead. If there was any hope of catching her, which there absolutely was no shot in hell of anybody catching her, it was pretty much gone right then. The free skate was almost perfect, you could say. She had one issue on her second quad toe, she went for the quad toe triple style combination and ended up having to double it. It was clean, but she didn't have the ride out to really get into that triple style cow. So she just doubled it. I mean, it still scored amazingly. It's a quad toe combination in the bonus. Like, come on. So no real issues. Level four is on everything clean. Really good performance. Again, the judges just let the scores fly. Uh, judge number two pretty much thought Camila was perfect. Straight tens and then one nine seven five in transition. Only one other judge went as far as to give her a ten in performance, which was judge nine. So essentially, none of judge two scores actually counted because his or hers were the highest of everybody's. Still, if judges are getting that kind of giddy over her in a regular season event, you can imagine what's going to happen if she's able to go to the Olympics and nails this program. It's going to be insane. Camila scores 185.29. That, again, is yet another world record on her way to a 272.71 total. That is a massive score, a massively massive score. So massive, in fact, if you were to take that 272 and throw it over into the men's event, she wins by several points. And that's not even taking into account the fact that the men's scores are factored on a different scale. So my thing is this. I have no disputes or qualms whatsoever with the fact that she won. She deserved to win. And by a good margin as well. My issue here comes with the scoring. I feel like and have felt like for a long while actually that the scoring in figure skating really is just kind of getting out of hand. Yes, Camila is an amazing skater, and she deserves the high scores. I don't know that her scores should be as high as they are. 
Camille is a remarkable skater, but she is not a perfect skater. And that is where the judges really need to pull back on the reins and not have so many happy piddles when they're watching her skate. Like, rein it in a little bit. She's not perfect. She has things that she can improve. That 272, of course, is yet another world record. So yeah, she broke all of them. She broke the short program record, the free skate record, and the total score record. So yeah, records. Just smashed them all. Smashed them. The writing is pretty much on the wall at this point. The judges are 100% behind her. She's skating well, which is going to make it just that much easier to give her those kind of really huge, massive scores. Point of the matter is Camila is pretty much the standard right now. You know, she is strong across the board. And I think that is one of the reasons why she's doing so well. She has big jumps, difficult jumps, amazing spins. She's fast across the ice. Her skating skills are decent. Her transitions are good. You know, the programs are good because she's such a beautiful skater. And she's got the political backing of basically the head honcho of women's skating, Itiri Tuparitze. So, I mean, what can you do? Honestly, what are you going to do? I mean, she won this thing by more than 43 points. It's pretty much unbelievable. And again, it just kind of puts her on a completely different level. I do not see anybody beating her this year. Again, it's going to be one of those things where... She will end up beating herself, if at all, but I, I am pretty certain she is the favorite for everything straight up through the end of the season. I mean, I would be shocked unless she goes out and just kind of tanks. She's going to win pretty much everything. The final is coming up. She is far and away the favorite for that. She's the favorite for Russian nationals. She's the favorite for Europeans. She's the favorite for the Olympics, and she's the favorite for Worlds. Alina Zagitova, in her debut season, won all of her Grand Prix events, the final, Nationals, Europeans, and the Olympics. She did not, however, win Worlds or even medal at Worlds that year. Alina wasn't able to do it, but I'm thinking Camila can. Time will tell, of course, but if there was somebody I were going to bet on to say, oh yeah, they can clean sweep every single title, I'd put my money on Camila at this point. So congrats to Camila. She's headed to the finals. She qualified in first place. Like I said, she is the overwhelming, ridiculously so, favorite to win that title. The only question there is, is she going to beat her records that she set at this event? At this point, I just feel like she's going to be smashing records from now straight through till Beijing. But I guess we'll see. Coming in second and winning the silver medal here, my girl, Elizaveta Tuktemesheva of Russia. So I'm just so freaking happy, y'all. I really am. I can't help it. I love the fact that Lisa just seems to be rolling right now. Next to Camila, Lisa is giving the most indication that she needs to be on the team to me. I mean, I, and I'll just say this now and, and come back and, and quote me if I'm right and quote me if I'm wrong, but I feel like right now the Olympic team should be Camila Valiva, Elizaveta Tiktemesheva, and Anna Sherbakova. I think those are your three skaters so far this season who have proven that not only are they putting out the content, they're putting it out consistently enough, and then they're also getting those scores. I think with those three, that's almost a guaranteed sweep of the podium right there. Of course, season is not over yet. We've got the final, and then you've got nationals. It's a lot can happen between them, but still, those are my three. I digress. Back to the competition. The short program was great. Triple Axel is there. It is just freaking money at this point. It is such a good jump. It's such a solid jump for her. Beautifully landed here. Triple that's triple toe. No problem. The triple flip mm, might have got away with a little bit of something. I actually thought that one probably should have been on the quarter turn. Similar to Skate Canada where I thought the combo might have been a little under, but they were skating in Russia, so she kind of got the look the other way bonus. The judges did notice it wasn't as solid as it usually is. She only got about half a point in terms of GOE on it. Level four is on everything. The program component scores continue to go up a little bit. She's in the high eights, get, even getting some nines here. She scored 80.10 in the short program, solidly into second place. All she had to do was deliver in the free skate, and she did. Lisa opened up with a nice triple axle double toe. The second triple axle was not as great. She kind of fell out of it a little bit. But again, the rule with the triple axle is rotate it and do not hit the ground. And she rotated it 
and she did not fall. So still was a solid element for her in terms of points. Everything else was solid. Triple X, triple toe, double axle, triple style combination. No other issues. Level fours on everything. Really strong on components. It was a good performance. Again, this is just such a fun program. I'm so happy she has this as a vehicle for this season. I think it's perfect for her. And she went out there. She performed. She had a blast. Audience definitely loved it. So can't really ask for anything more than that. 149.13. She ended up placing third in the free skate. Still finished second overall, 229.23. Again, she's been consistently scoring around 230 total points all season long. That is podium points, okay? 230, nine times out of 10, is going to get you on the podium. So again, this is just me advocating for Lisa T. I want her on that team. Congratulations to Lisa T on that silver medal. This gives her a grand total of 26 points. She qualifies in third place for the Grand Prix Finals. She is heading back. This is her first time being at a final since the 2018-2019 season. Again, this is just greatness. I mean, she continues to find ways to get back to the top. You know, 10 plus years in it, she's still going to the final. And she's going to the final as a medal favorite. So very proud of Lisa T. Best of luck to her at the final. And uh, we'll see what happens. Finishing third at this event, getting the bronze medal and completing the Russian sweep, Maya Kromik of Russia. So it started off kind of rough for Maya, to be honest. And I was a little worried about that just because between her first Grand Prix event and skating here at Rust Telecom, she competed at a Challenger Series event. She competed at Warsaw Cup. She did win, but she had a really disastrous free skate. I mean, she had falls. She had issues with both of the quads. It was just kind of a cluster. Not her best. She ended up with the win, but... I was a little worried that some of those jitters maybe from that free skate could have carried over into this competition. And in the short program, it pretty much did. The beginning of the program was fine. The double axle and the triple flip were all good, but the let's combo ended up being a splat. She fell on the combo, lost a lot of points there. Luckily, was able to finish everything off well. Level fours on everything. Solid in terms of her component scores, but... The fall hurt her, so she ended up finishing the short program in fifth place. Even though Maya finished fifth in the short program, I knew she had a great shot to still get into medal position because she was the only other skater at this event with quads. She opened up with a nice quad toe, double toe. She went for the second quad toe and kind of stumbled out of it, so she lost some points there, but it was still a solid attempt, and it got a decent amount of points, 6.7 points even after losing some points on the base value. Thankfully for her, she was able to pull everything else together. Both combos were clean, level fours on everything. It was a good performance for her. Like I said, I'm really a fan of this program. I like it. I love the music. I love the choreography. She did a good job. I don't think she performed as much as I've seen her perform in the past. I think she was really focused on making sure that this was going to be a good program. And she accomplished that. Strong on program component scores, really good on everything else. 154.97, she ended up finishing second in the free skate, which moved her up to third overall, and that bronze medal, which is what she needed to get to the final. With that bronze medal, Maya earns 24 points on the Grand Prix, which qualifies her for the final in that fifth spot. That is a really great accomplishment for somebody coming in in their debut senior season, making it to the final big deal and definitely keeping her in that conversation for possibly one of those spots to Beijing. Overall, this was a really solid competition for Maya. No, not her best with everything that happened in the short program, but she definitely bounced back after what happened at Warsaw Cup. I feel like she is one of the outside shots for a medal at the final. She has the quads, which is a big deal because not too many skaters do, but She's lagging behind a little bit in terms of her components. So that is going to be somewhere where she has to kind of fight. But I, if I were looking for somebody to get onto the podium who might not necessarily be expected to medal, it's going to be Maya. So congrats to Maya on her bronze medal and her trip to the final. And best of luck to her at that event. Coming in fourth at this event was Mariah Bell of the United States. 
I am feeling very relieved. Let's just put it this way. Um, she competed last week at International de France, and it was not her best. And just for the U.S. women in general, I'm just kind of biting my nails this season. We really haven't had any skaters who have stepped up like, hey, I am the one, I'm the one going to be on the team. I'm the one carrying the flag for the U.S. women. It's just kind of been like Alyssa Lewis kind of defaulted into that position, even though she hasn't been skating that great. You know, she's just kind of the best we've had so far. Thankfully, Mariah came out here after, I guess, kind of her warm-up event in France and really kind of showed what she can do. And thank God she did because I can breathe just a little bit. The short program was very solid. In France, she fell on the triple flip, triple toe. It looked like she was going for it here, but, you know, I think she figured it was just not worth it to try to pull it off. And she ended up doubling the triple toe, but it was fine. It was clean. It didn't really get the kind of GOE that you'd want, but it was clean. She did not fall. And that is the name of the game in the short program. Get through the elements as cleanly as possible. And she did that. The triple Lutz got really good GOE. Level four is on everything. The program component scores came up much better this time around. 69-37 in the short program, finishing third, heading into the free skate. The free skate was really good. No triple triples again, but she did complete seven triple jumps. She had a triple flip double axle sequence off the top and then had a three jump combination in the bonus as well. It's smart. It's just a smarter way to skate for somebody who is just really not consistent with the triple-triple. Under this scoring system, it is better to go out and do easier content cleaner than do harder content crappier. You lose points when you don't do something well, but if you can go out and execute a triple flip double axle nicely, you can get great GOE on it versus trying to crank out a triple flip triple toe that you're going to under rotate and stumble out of and you're going to lose way more points anyway. So I like this smarter approach to her skating for now. Honestly, it was the best she could have done in terms of her placement. You know, there was really no shot at getting on the podium here, but to come out and skate cleanly, put up a really strong score, 140-98, and a strong total score, 210-35, finishing fourth right off the podium. This is the best we could have hoped for for Mariah, and I feel like that is really kind of settling her in. It's all about momentum. You'll hear me say that so many times, but it really is. Momentum is everything in this sport. A bad skate can slow you down, like we saw with Maya, but a good skate can kind of boost you up. So I'm hoping that Mariah can take these performances here, which both of them were really solid, and kind of translate that into her training. She's got a couple of weeks until national, so hopefully she can build off of these performances and get that spot. She's another person I would really like to see head to the Olympics. She's a skater who's been around for a really long time, and she's another one who I think actually deserves to go. So best of luck to Mariah with that. Congratulations on the fourth place finish. She improved by like 20 points over her international de France score. So fingers crossed that she is going to continue this upward momentum and we'll see her stronger and even better at nationals in a couple of weeks. Finishing fifth at this event was Luna Hendricks of Belgium. I was kind of hoping she might be able to pull off a surprise here and get on the podium, but Alas, it was not to be. She started off pretty rough in the short program. The triple let's triple toe. She spun out of the landing on the triple let's, had to add a three turn between. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. She lost a little bit in GOE, 0.34, but it was still a solid opening. Unfortunately, that kind of seemed to shake her because when it came to the triple flip, she ended up blanking on it, singled it out, no points, really big hit to her score there. Thankfully, she was able to keep everything else in line, getting all level fours on everything else, but the damage had been done. 64-44 in the short program, she finished sixth. The free skate was better, but not the best. I mean, I kind of felt for her just coming in. As much as I wanted to see her come out and nail everything, I knew, you know, it's a difficult thing to do. It's a tough task to be great. You know, you're great one time, and then people are expecting you to be great every other time you come out. It's a lot of pressure, and it kind of got to her. I think it got to her in the short program. 
It got to her in the beginning of the free skate, but thankfully for her, because the free skate is longer, she had time to settle in. So she had issues on the triple X, triple toe, under rotated the triple loop. So she lost points on both of those, but she got it together with the triple flip. And then in the second half, she was clean. She kind of settled in. She relaxed. She kind of started performing more. It was just, it was more of what I was hoping we were going to see from her the whole way through, but I'm proud of her. She did not fall to pieces. She struggled in the beginning, shook it off, finished very strongly. 139.25. She finished fifth in the free skate, which moved her up to finishing fifth overall, 203.69 points. It was still a good performance. Anything that's hitting 200 points means you're doing a good job. You know, it wasn't great, but it was good. And we know she's capable of scoring much better than that. So I am really proud of Luna. It was a bit of an outside shot for her to make it onto the podium here. I'm just proud of her for bouncing back. You know, these are learning lessons for her to come out with that pressure and handle it and end up delivering a solid program like she did in the free skate. Finishing fifth here, earning a bronze medal at her first event. This was definitely a successful Grand Prix season for her. So very proud of her moving forward. You know, I think she's already competed at nationals for Belgium. So, I mean, I know we'll see her at Europeans where she has a really great shot at finishing in that top four, top five. And we'll probably see her in Beijing as well. So hopefully she can stay healthy, keep working and have a really great competition at her next event. And that is the end of Ross Telecom Cup and also the end of the 2021 Grand Prix Series. Everything is in. The scores are set. The final is set. So qualifying in first place, Camila Valiva of Russia with 30 points. In second place, Anna Sherbakova of Russia also with 30 points. When the point totals are tied and they have the same medal count, we go to the tiebreaker for the score. And as we can see, Camila scored 537.79 to Anna's 466.47. So Camila qualifies first. In third place, Elizaveta Tukhtemesheva of Russia with 26 points. In fourth place, Kari Sakamoto of Japan with 24 points. In fifth place, Maya Kromik of Russia with 24 points. And in sixth place, Aliona Kostanaya of Russia with 24 points. So even though 4th through 6th had 24 points, because Kairi has that gold medal, it's weighted heavier. So she qualifies ahead of Maya and Aliona. And then because Aliona and Maya both have the same medal count and point total, we go to the tiebreaker and Maya had 446.04 to Aliona's 436.39. So Maya qualifies in 5th with Aliona in 6th. There are three substitutes for this event, Young Yu of Korea, Luna Hendricks of Belgium, and Mai Mihara of Japan. As much as I would love to see any of these ladies skate, I am crossing my fingers. I do not. I think we have had enough withdrawals and injuries and everything. I would like to see the top six who qualified actually compete. The Grand Prix Final will take place in Osaka, Japan, December 9th through the 12th. So as I was about to start working on getting the video ready to post, I was checking the news and see that because of this new coronavirus strand that's going around, Japan is now banning all entry from foreigners beginning on the 30th of November. As of right now, the Japanese Federation doesn't know exactly what they're going to do. Obviously, the thought would be to let another country host it, but we are less than two weeks out and not too sure what's going to happen with it. So. I will try to keep you updated, but as of today, it's not looking good. <laughs> as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share it, and come back soon. Okay, bye.